a news program from a native perspective. Whether it's a flag pole raising or whether it's an elders conference, if it's important to the people and I make a story out of it, this is the most exciting, wonderful, fun time of my life. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. I'm Jeannie Green. Welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. Native news, native information. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so very much for joining us. Hello to my good friends across America on reservations. Nice to have you with us and I love your emails. Hello Canada. I love you to call me too. Thank you so very much for all your emails. It really does my heart well to hear from you and hello Alaska. Nice to have you with us. On today's program, we present the conclusion to the Bethel Immersion Language Program. Then we travel up the highway from Anchorage to Copper Center, Alaska. We gave you a story about a year ago about the Hudson Lake Recovery Center. At that time, the Recovery Center really was nothing more than tents. But now they've got real buildings, log ones at that. So it's a great show. I'll be back with Heartbeat Alaska right after this. My name is Melvin Andrew, I'm from Manicotic, and I'm the village public safety officer. My name is uh, James Gallon, I'm a trooper in Northway, been there for 26 years. My name is Trooper Daryl Hildebrand, uh, currently in Kotzebue, and I've been a trooper for three years. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Bristol Environmental and Engineering Services, serving Alaska since 1994 a subsidiary of Bristol Bay Native Corporation. Hi, I'm Mark from Scan Home, and we are proud to sponsor Heartbeat Alaska. Scan Home, serving all of Alaska's home and office furnishing needs. Thank you, Scan Home, for making Heartbeat Alaska possible. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. by the Nature Conservancy of Alaska, working with Alaska's rural communities to conserve and protect our natural heritage. A year ago, we presented a story on the Hudson Lake Recovery Center. At that time, the recovery center was under construction and the clients would stay in tents. Well, the buildings are up now. It's a beautiful center located in one of the most unique settings in the world, out in the wilderness on a lake. It's a community that does things the way they know it should be done. A people who hold true to their culture and beliefs, aware of the time they live in, and the challenges that travel with time. The people of the Atna region are changing the path that has led so many astray. In a battle against alcohol abuse and drug addiction, these warriors are conquering their enemies, taking back lives that were once lost. From the sobriety walk to the annual gathering, the Atna people have taken control the native way, opening up a treatment and recovery center, entwining traditional practices with modern ways. Hudson Lake, the Indian name for that actually is the uh, meant uh, the lake behind the rock. There is a rock kind of structure around there, the mountains, you know, the hills close by. The new treatment center is on land donated by Kludikon Native Village Council, simply known as the camp. We believe that uh, one of the significant things that has to happen, reference residential treatment, is the expectations of lifestyle. I say that 
because when you look at the Copper River Basin, as we say with all of Alaska, it's a unique lifestyle. Uh, but one of the things that has uh, not made much sense in residential treatment up to this point in time is the fact that there has been no treatment program that focused on the life skills necessary for the rural lifestyle. They've been staying in tents because the cabins weren't done yet, and they're really, it's been pretty interesting listening to what they've had to say, what they've done when they've been out here. Uh, when you look at uh, uh, how much how much wood does it take to put up for the week or two days when the temperature is 40 below? Uh, what are the safety things you do to ensure that your your wood stove is safe in this environment? Because we re rely primarily on those things. The heating oil is as expensive here as any place else within the state. Uh, how do you keep your chainsaw in good operating condition? So in identifying our needs, it appears that the need is high throughout the state. Uh, so that's one of the challenges that says, well, we've got to figure out some way in our schedule then uh, that would allow uh, full usage of the facility and programs. Uh, so we are looking at year-round involvement in the camp. Um, in fact, uh, if you would, kind of on the design end, we've already spent some time out of camp in tents because our cabins are all not fully built yet when it was 20 below. Uh, so we know that we're able to meet the physical challenges of running a year-round camp. After three years operation, the goal of the Hudson Lake Treatment Center is to house 15 beds and they're taking steps in that direction. We're hoping to get up to somewhere around 15 um, to 20 um, capacity. We have uh, we have four dorms and two counselor two counselor dorms, and uh, we have had up to five men in in one dorm. So. Uh, Comfortably with two counselors, I, we we think about eight would be comfortable. Um, we would have more counselors per client if we had more than eight. The growth has has been uh, tremendous in the last in the last year, uh, both with the buildings and both with uh, people coming up here to heal. Uh, I think our journey, you know, is just just beginning, but it's it's continuing. It's a new and unique approach to the treatment of substance abuse, focusing on native values to make this program the first of its kind. Well, we like to think that probably that uh, we're kind of on the, the leading edge, you might say, but I, but I think in, uh, in uh, Native American country is a, is a huge awakening for us that we need to go back to the basics. There's been a serious lack of programs that are geared to the Native American lifestyle that's easier for them to to uh, to respond to in a pace that is more comfortable. I think that yeah we have a unique program here and I think we have a lot of people looking at us and uh, saying that this is what they've been talking about for six or seven years but the beautiful part about it is, is we're doing it. And, and, I, and I, I think we're headed in the right direction. So I think it's just getting back in touch with who we are, and I, that's, I think that it's going to only grow, as I say, we're getting more and more people. And, uh, and they're hungry because what we, what's been doing in the past is not working very well.
the gift of past experiences handed down. There are no greater lessons. Heartbeat Alaska chooses the Longhouse Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. And this is where we choose to house our guests that come from all over the world to spend time with us. And this is where we hope you will choose to spend your time when you come to Anchorage. Choose the Longhouse Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. Heartbeat wishes to thank Haglin Aviation Services Incorporated for making our stories possible. We travel on Haglin Aviation and we thank you for choosing them too. Haglin Aviation has been serving Alaskans in the bush for over 20 years. We fly Haglins all the time. Operating with 29 aircraft at 8 stations across Alaska and servicing over 100 destinations daily. Haglin Aviation, your ticket to ride in rural Alaska. While substance abuse is evident in all walks of life, the priority of this camp is dealing with the problems within the Native community. Priority is the uh, clients that would be coming from the five contacting village villages of the uh, Atna region, and uh, we have had we have had uh, the majority of our clients come from the Anchorage area. The majority of our clients are um, people that have had an average of uh, four past treatments for chemical dependency. Um, the majority of our clients that are from Anchorage are, are homeless. And they have been very appreciative of being out here away from the, the busyness of, of the uh, structured treatment um, Anchorage city life. I like the program. It's, it's like they tailor made it for me. I mean, I feel real good about working on myself. This great place, you know, really good people. And of course, I'm here for a reason. I'm working on my alcoholism. The door swings both ways. If you want to be here, you don't have to be here. It's all in our head. They're not going to say you quit drinking. They'll help you, and you put it in your own head. It's always said that, yes, alcohol is a big problem, but it's only a symptom of what we need to heal inside. If we take care of these things that are missing, that have been pushed down and put away or hurt, or we take care of that, the alcohol will take care of itself. And success with lifelong recovery is the goal of the camp. Counselors tell us the story of one man who has gone through the program and is carrying on. We've had some uh, really positive things happen with uh, some of our people that have come up here to heal. I, I received a letter not very long ago from a gentleman that was up here and uh, he's completely turning his life around. In fact, he's starting back to school, going back to college. He's, uh, you know, he's in, on the advisory board for a program in uh, Anchorage now. And uh, he's really been, <laughs> he's been a strong advocate for us. He's very aware of what he needs to do on a daily basis to stay in recovery and, and puts that first. The biggest thing that he received while he was here, he thought, was really a chance to look at what his, his spirituality was. And they're also going to continue to help people to find their way to the path that leads to cleaner, healthier life. That's what I see what's happening with people here. Is this is a real opportunity for people to get back to being human beings again. His recovery is a process that just doesn't start with 40 days at Hudson Lake or any of the other good programs that are here in the state. There has to be ongoing support, um, ongoing therapy. You know, we're hoping that they get the tools here that will help them be able to live a, a life that they can not uh, get back into their addiction actively and stay in recovery. We've come a long ways in the field, but there still is a need for ongoing from intensive treatment to uh, them being totally responsible and making decisions totally on their own. And what is really important about living, 
learning how to live. Not to make a living, but how to live, how to make a life. Thank you everyone at Copper Center Alaska, Copper River Native Association, and everyone else for your help in that story. There's a number on the screen. If you need information about this recovery center, give them a call. They'd love to hear from you. I'll be back right after this. We at Ginny Green Productions count on Reliance tax accountants because counting is what they do. They've recently moved to 516 East Fireweed Lane in Anchorage. Reliance has been in business since 1981. Glad to see you. So only the location is new. Come by and talk with lifelong Alaskan Kathy Riley. With 21 years helping individuals and businesses with their tax accounting needs, Reliance Tax Accounting has the experience to make a difference to your bottom line. Call 561-0998 and start counting on the pros at Reliance Tax Accounting. For more than 50 years, Frontier Flying Service has been your connection to rural Alaska. Frontier Flying Service, a proud sponsor of Heartbeat Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by TribalNews.com, the world's most complete source of Alaska Native, Native American news on the Internet. Welcome back. And now the conclusion to our story, which began last week on the Bethel Immersion Program, one of the most innovative, exciting programs preserving our culture and teaching the youth Native languages. Last week, we showed you part one of the Bethel Immersion Program, a program that has the youth of this village hub deeply submerged in their native language and heritage. The Ayubrun Iliknarbuk School has taken the initiative and challenge of preserving their culture by starting the Immersion Program, which teaches everything an ordinary English-based school would teach, except for one slight difference. Everything at this school is taught in the indigenous native language, Yupik. Not only is this program ensuring that the Yupik language will remain alive for years to come, but it is also bridging the gaps between the youth and the elders of Bethel and the surrounding villages. It's a pilot program that is lighting the way for other native communities around the world. But, as history has proven over and over again, many people fear change. And with this change of tactics in the field of education, the Ayuprun Iliknarbuk School has their work cut out for them. It takes a lot of strength to be part of the school, or part of an immersion school. And in this case, you know, uh, it's an indigenous language program. It's not just a foreign language, and it's an indigenous language. And for us, um, I think you have to be a strong human being to be able to face the challenges as a teacher, as a student, as a parent, as a supporter, because it's something that is very valuable, that is priceless anywhere in this world. But priceless comes with a price. Many of the residents of Bethel are against the Yupik Immersion School for different reasons, one of which is that this school is graded on their English performance and not their native language performance, which just adds to the pressures these kids and teachers face. The question comes to be, you know, how are they going to do on the English test? What about the English tests? And that's always a concern. Um, for us, we know that in our program, we expect our students not to perform as well as students that are in the regular English program. Because that, you know, Yupik is the target language for the first three years. And then English int is introduced in third grade. And then once it's introduced, what, what concerns we have as a program is were judged or were graded based on the English performance, and yet that hasn't been the main instructional language. And um, that's one of the concerns that I have as for our program. Uh, but on the political side, it's seen as 
see they're not doing as well as regular English programs, and that's where the politics comes in. We follow the same curriculum as uh, the standards of any other language program as any English language program. We have the same expectations for our students, and we teach the, to the standards. Um, the only difference is we teach in our language, which is the Yupik language. And this is our elementary cross-country team, Akkapudut. We're going to be running one mile out and one mile back. We have a, two, a delayed start for some of the students who are faster runners. Ages nine through nine and up, um, and that's about what used to be the fourth grade. And um, this is just the beginning of our sports, our uh, physical season, I guess, for um, our elementary students. We encourage sports. We have cross country, uh, Native Youth Olympics, and basketball. 21, 30, 21, 30, 21, 31. 21. For our program, this has never been done in the whole wide world. You know, outside, informally, it has been, you know, at, with our elders and our ancestors, but not in an educational setting. For other communities to see the importance of, you know, language and cultural retention, it's very, very important for the students to know their identity. You know, it seems like in most communities, you know, something important like that is just disappearing. And it's, you know, I think when an elder sees a young child speaking in their own language, that's far more impressive than, you know, someone speaking English. They know that, they know that their language, that they, you know, passed on is being passed on further. And will continue to be passed on from generation to generation. It's just another example of how Alaska, her people, are teaching the world how to preserve an ancient culture in a modern time. Thank you for joining us for Heartbeat Alaska Native News, Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. I want to remind you, please, to get your camcorder out, start sending in those greetings from your village. It's impossible for us to fly out to every single village to collect the greetings, so I need your help. Right here in our studio at 6216 Old Seward Highway, we'll be holding a Christmas party just for you. And we'll use that video in our Christmas show as well. That's 6216 Old Seward Highway from 1 in the afternoon to 5 p.m. We hope to see you here for lots of goodies. And it's co-sponsored by Wave Wholesale. So you know there's going to be lots of hot dogs and lots of hamburgers. God bless every one of you. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jeannie Green. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>